Hello, welcome to Kev's Shed once again. Uh, this time I've got a very good friend, uh, uh, Vince Austin, who's a, uh, a uh, sculptor and steampunk artist. And uh, Vince is visiting me uh, today down here at Kev's Shed, and he's gonna start a project and tell us all about it. Thanks, Please, Kev. Tell us. Uh, well, I've got some recycled jarrah here. I glued it all together uh, to make one big solid block. And I'm gonna carve a shark. Um, so the way to go about that is, first of all, I'm going to draw the profile of the shark on the top and on the sides, then cut that out with the bandsaw. Uh, and when I've got the rough shape of the shark, then I can carve that back probably with, start off with the Albatech turbo plane to get the, the curves, the nice fluent curves of the shark. Um, the side fins, dorsal fin, um, extra bits for the tail, they'll be glued on later. Then we're gonna plate it with copper, maybe some brass. Uh, to get a nice fluent curve on my shark, I'm gonna use a bit of wood, bendy wood, which uh, just found lying on the floor over there. So yes, it's tomorrow now because you can tell I've got a nice clean shirt on. Um, so we've finished doing the rough shaping on the bandsaw and we did cheat a little bit. We used a chainsaw too. Um, it was a bit unwieldy, wasn't it? Vince? Yeah, a bit on the heavy side, but the chainsaw worked well. Nice electric one. That's it. Um, so now what's going to happen? I might actually make the fins separately, the, the dorsal and the lateral fins and the tips of the, of the, uh, the tail fin and attach them perhaps with some little brass uh, tubing so they're kind of separated because yeah. there's yeah. some kind of separation yeah a bit of an artistic statement in artistic yeah I, I, so. I know where you're going because yeah. I know your stuff yeah so yeah I'm looking forward to seeing how this goes Good. please go ahead Starting to look uh, distinctly shark here. Nice fin. I'm pleased with uh, where it's going. I've just got to blend some of these curves out a little bit more. The important thing about sanding, um, which is just worth mentioning, is when you're moving the machine, you don't go backwards and forwards and backwards and forwards. As soon as you stop, you create an, an excess of sanding load. So the idea would be to, to keep the thing moving at all time. It, it's the same with the belt sander, orbital sander, random sanders, the whole thing. As soon as you stop and change direction, that moment where you go back, then you've got that excess. So always keep your sander moving, bit of a figure of eight, or at least in a line, and then off and on again. Little tip of the day there. Oh, well, I've got the shark strapped to a table and uh, um, I've, you may recall last time that I planned to, to attach some extra bits of wood and uh, to increase the size of the tail. So uh -huh. as you can see, I've glued them on with a little bit of webbing, which I've twisted round and tucked under oh, the edge there. Excellent clamp idea there. So, so basically, if the disc can come off now, see that's a bit sprung loaded there. So we just untwist that. This gives you a nice flat surface on the wood so it doesn't cut in like rope wood. And, uh, and there you go. Very good. That's all ready to go. So we can carve that down um, very shortly. But in the meantime, I'm currently um, excavating, if you like, or drilling a hole in woody terms, um, so that I can mount the shark uh, on a piece of recycled metal in another piece of recycled metal which is a uh, 
gear off some piece of agricultural equipment. So that's gonna, ugh, that's got a lot of weight in it. So that'll be a bit like that. So because this shaft is a little bit too big for this hole, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this hole a little bit bigger using the turbo shaft. Shark looking nice and smooth. I've got the dorsal fin, two lateral fins on. So now what I need to do is make the two rear lateral fins. I think they have a scientific name. So basically, we're going to take a nice approximate sized piece of wood and give us a bit of a fin shape. So they'll probably go about there, one on either side. And uh, I'll cut those out. And look, I've just made them. How about that? That was amazing. So They'd go round about there. Maybe we'll dowel them into position, put a spot of glue on, and then we can carve them back to how they suit. As you can see, I started plating the shark with some bits of copper and drilled some holes, pre-drilled some holes into the jarrah and nailed it in with some stainless steel nails. And that's just the beginning. So I'm going to plate or some of the other bits here, the cracks, say for example. The idea being that this is a recycled work. Yes, uh, Kev, uh, well, as you know, we did make rather a lot of sawdust, um, we're good at that. And the shark is finished, a little bit uh, smaller than we expected, but nonetheless, a shark. Isn't she sweet? How do I know it's a girl? Just a guess. But no, only joking, the real shark is here. So this is the finished product. She cycled re-shark, close to reef shark, loosely based on a white pointer, but a combination of many of the sharks of Western Australia in many ways. 